Welcome to Marriott MBA today. My name is John Holbrook, and uh, we're grateful to have in studio today uh, with us uh, Dr. Jim Brow. Dr. Brow, thank you. Uh, thank you for coming and welcome. Thanks, John. Today we're going to be talking about the uh, Twitter IPO. IPOs are back in fashion, and uh, Twitter is uh, particularly uh, in the, the, the minds of many investors. Um, Dr. Brow, before we get into Twitter specifically, could you give us some color on the pricing and the valuation of an IPO? Sure, absolutely. In the process, when you get towards the, the, the latter parts and you've done this roadshow and built the book, then generally it's even sometimes the night before or even the morning of the company going public on the stock exchange which they've chosen, they will declare the official price. And so this is always the last amendment right before they price. And in Twitter's situation, this is kind of why there's a lot of buzz going on. It's because analysts thought Twitter would price higher than what they came in at. So you, you've got uh, a lower price and Twitter has only offered about 12% of the company for sale to, to the public. So they've restricted the amount of shares being sold and they've put this low price at the same time. So Twitter's come out with a, with a lower price. Um, what type of advantages are to the company uh, if they were you know, coming out with this lower than expected price? So great question. Uh, obviously, there's some rational reason they've priced it low. Um, and, and what the experts are thinking, and I agree, is they're trying to look for what we call the first day pop. So if the offer price is here, they want the closing market price to be well above that on the first day because it acts almost like advertising. It, it'll catch news. Um, Twitter went up 50% on the first day. That would be uh, catchy. People would be like, whoa, that must be a good stock. It must be a good investment and then they will get positive momentum, which is the opposite of what happened to Facebook. Right. Facebook priced really, really high, and then at the last second, the investment bank notched them down. Then when they went public, investors were really worried, and you saw this huge fall in the price, and it is clear that that is what Twitter's trying to avoid. So Twitter has all this positive buzz uh, you know, coming, leading into the IPO, and they're trying to build upon this buzz by basically underpricing the offering. So you mentioned Facebook. How does this contrast? You know, what are some of the other things that basically went wrong with the Facebook IPO? Right, and this is interesting, and this is why anyone who may be thinking of investing in Twitter might want to think twice. Facebook actually was a profitable company. So they had uh, positive earnings per share, and they had actually made money after costs. Now, Twitter has never done this. So Twitter has only lost money over its history. Um, Facebook was growing more rapidly and continuing to grow as they went into their IPO. Twitter's still growing, but it's not growing as fast of a rate. Um, so Facebook uh, kind of went through those, that hard time where they fell down. It was from $38 a share to $18 a share. But then a year and a half later, they bumped back up to $52 a share. Um, so I think Twitter's trying to also price low, not just for the first day pop, because they have uh, some more uncertainty than what Facebook had. So with the not necessarily positive fundamentals, what's, what's the attraction to the Twitter IPO? Excellent question. So um, if Twitter had used a different form of accounting, then they could have booked it as a positive uh, earnings. Or if they had not made uh, a big acquisition, they would have had positive earnings. And if they had not invested heavily in research and development. So there was three different ways that they could have had positive earnings. So that's, it's, um, uh, let me just finish with this. It's interesting, I just read a New York Times article published three hours ago, and in that article, uh, the author used the term lottery ticket, gamble, and bet when referring to the Twitter IPO. So there's a lot of risk involved in it. So Twitter, there have been a number of levers that Twitter could have used to made prime the pump on their earnings, but as you said, it's a very, very risky bet because they don't have those fundamentals. So investor beware. Exactly. We're uh, really happy to have had you on the show today, and we hope to have you back on the show again soon. Thanks, John. From John Holbrook and Professor Jim Brow, uh, we will uh, see you next time on Marriott MBA Today.